Hello and welcome to Xeno Warrior Podcast Minisodes. My name is Vera and I'm joined by my two cannibalistic co-hosts, Katie. Hello. And Libby. Hi. I feel like we've definitely used that adjective We've, we've done it? Is it for... The um, abyss, maybe? Oh, yeah. You're probably right. I, I thought I was used like hungies <laughs> before. That's very possible. So I also. kind of was like, oh, is it, maybe this one would be hungies then if the cannibals were used. We're always hungies. <laughs> well, as promised, uh, we're going to be buzzing in your ears today. We're going to be tearing into some good content. Buzz, buzz. <laughs> We're going to be talking about Yellow Jackets, yes. a fantastic show that everyone should be obsessed with because we sure are. And let's get this out of the way. Mm-hmm. Buzz Buzz is usually what we call Mark Beasley, right? I was hoping this would be addressed. <laughs> All right. But Buzz 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 is Yellow Jackets. Oh, okay. I'm All glad right. there's a difference. Okay. Yes. Otherwise, it would be confusing. <laughs> yes, exactly. Mark Beasley is not involved with this production no. at all. But, you know, you could play, you, uh, what is it, like Six Degrees of Xena or Lucy Lawless through some of these casks. They are Australian. Sure. So. Good point. <laughs> Actually, one person literally overlaps Lucy Lawless. Oh? Yes. Ooh, who? Samantha Hanratty, who was in Salem with Lucy oh! Lawless. There you go. Nice. <laughs> I'm so glad people from Salem are amounting to things. Yeah, yeah. No, it's like when I was like looking her up, I was like, oh my God, uh, she was that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she was all up on Lucy. Yeah, it was great. Wow. <laughs> yeah, she works with some good folks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yellow Jackets yes. is on Showtime, yes. or however you want to watch it. I guess so. <laughs> you can watch the first episode for free mm, if you yes. if you don't have Showtime and you're in the United States and you're thinking, hey, maybe this channel is for me since they have the amazing <laughs> show Yellow Jackets. Watch the first one for free. I mean, they also have the L word and the L word generation Q if some of our audience might be interested. Or they, <laughs> I mean, they probably have seen it already. Or Twin Peaks, The Return. Oh, uh, yes. You know what? It's synergistic here with uh, with Yellow Jackets. Absolutely there. a lot of David Lynch in this DNA. Which is very surprising, I thought. I was not expecting that aspect of it. I was like, okay, this is about, you know, some high school girls who crash land in the woods and then you follow their grown up selves and that's it. That's the story. But there's a lot more crazy so stuff. So much more. Yeah. It's really funny reading the coverage of the show because you get so many log lines that are like, it's Lord of the Flies meets Heathers. And like, <laughs> sure. Or they'll be like, it's Lost meets Stranger Things meets <laughs> Mean Girls. And you're like, yeah. sure. Okay. <laughs> People love to smoosh this, but I feel like you should throw Blue Velvet into the smoosh. That would really? Be, you know, you Why? Because of the high and, school? Yeah, you know, the dark side of suburbia. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we're not really like in suburbia. Well, you are, especially part. with Melanie Linsky. Yeah, with, um, Shauna's Shana. plot is very like very. you know you f- at least at first glance it's the bored housewife trope. Yeah, right. Okay, I don't know. I feel like a Twin Peaks is is the the better David Lynch because of the trees. You just like Twin Peaks better. <laughs> yes, I do. There are lots of trees. The trees are important, and I want to discuss them. But first, speaking of log lines, I mean, just a real quick one from the IMDb, just to explain in like one sentence. One <laughs> what, sentence. What, they, what, it, that looks is. like a really long sentence. Well, that's, that's the second one. That's I'm not gonna. <laughs> okay. I'm not gonna. Yeah, I don't read the longer off ones. the top. What is the program? Very very short. A wildly talented high school soccer girls team becomes the unlucky survivors of a plane crash deep in the Canadian wilderness. That's it. That's it. <laughs> huh. That's not enough. That's not. Yeah. What's the second sentence? The second one is like. Well, that that one's too long. Okay. <laughs> that's okay. Maybe this well, we show can... is actually hard to describe, and that's why everybody yeah. does the name Smush. another show. Smush. Yes, yes. I mean, the the second part of it would be you follow the survivors of the of of that plane crash. Um, Twenty five years later. Yes, exactly. I was going to say X amount of time later because I can't <laughs> do math. But, uh, but yeah, so we were we're set in nineteen ninety six. 
the story also flashes to present day when this aired 2021. Mm-hmm. 1996, a pretty significant year for this podcast. Oh, uh, yeah. I was got, gonna... <laughs> got, that's a prime time for Zena right there, 1996. Yeah. Um, I need season two of this show to mention Zena. I need somebody in the well, wilderness they to... Seen it. Yeah, they right, would have. Somebody, somebody watches Zena from that girls soccer it's team, Van. for sure. I, okay. I was going to say Van, too. <laughs> Can't wait. Van is a Zenite. Yes. Get the theory let's, let's, let's do it. Van does that Sandy Bullock speech. Yeah. And it, that's, you know, little Vera. So <laughs> little Vera was doing that and <laughs> watching yes, Zena. Yes, for sure. But you didn't play mm-hmm. soccer. Um, I played soccer. I played soccer for <laughs> one year. And I have to say, this show, you guys... I felt so seen in the fu- the only time you really see them playing is in the pilot. Right. But I would love if they do a soccer game in the woods. They at must some devise point. a soccer ball oh, at some oh, future that, season. Well, sure soccer ball on the plane, right? They just yeah. break. <laughs> yeah, they all fell out. I think maybe they could use a human head. Um, so, I know. Oh god. <laughs> just just throwing it out there. Um if you guys don't know the show, that's the kind of show this wow, is. Wow. Wow. Um well, I was going to say soccer balls originally were created from like pig bladders. So, Ooh, um, they, okay. could, um, they, they have could. the bear, they could use a bear bladder. Uh, Absolutely. Um, Good but, theor- theorizing. Uh, yeah. No, but but like in all seriousness, the only other time. So I played soccer in uh, middle school and in high school. I was not amazing. Let's just say. Okay. I was on the <laughs> JV team. Yeah. <laughs> um, because I didn't want to run a mile and I didn't want to dribble the soccer ball twenty times on my knee. Um, but I was on JV and I, I really enjoyed it. And I played like summertime, whatever league soccer so the only other time i felt like seen like this was like when i saw uh 10 things i hate about you where she plays soccer there i was like oh man it's me but like she's way better (laughs) but this and i don't remember exactly what they looked like in 10 things i hate about you i know the high school is like very rich Mm -hmm. and like that was not in south bend indiana and that that's not my high school but the shorts on these girls and the jerseys (laughs) on these girls were legit yeah the gigantic shorts mm-hmm. oh yeah that was me and i was like obsessed with this this was like the true representation of, <laughs> of soccer in the 90s 96 soccer i loved it oh my god and if you watch the like um u.s women's national team like around then giant giant outfits on them all it was crazy Oh, I was like so into the tiny amount of soccer that we saw. <laughs> and also like the, how they cut around like the actresses not being like yeah. that. Well, amazing. because they really didn't have to be good at soccer for this part. They had to be good at surviving oh in the wilderness. Oh my God. Yes, yes. Um, and I, I appreciated uh, the JV that was is on the plane <laughs> with them. Right. So, <laughs> so anyway, yes, the, uh, not enough about me. But yes, soccer, big deal. I loved it. I love that this is about a soccer team. Now we just need some high school girls tennis represented. So <laughs> my high school experience could be seen. <laughs> anyway, and uh, what about you? Did you play soccer? What I played. You, you played field hockey. A, I played a bunch of stuff for a year. No, my main sport was basketball. Oh. There was also had really big shorts <laughs> and they were very shiny. <laughs> I, I feel like the big shorts were a thing across multiple but, sports yeah. at that point, 90s yes. high school. I'm yeah. pretty sure I still have a pair of giant shorts from uh. from that time in my <laughs> drawer. I played basketball for a while. I played soccer for one year. I played field hockey for one year. I was I did like various positions. I was goalie for a while, so I, you know, van there there we yep. go. Mm-hmm. Um and then like midfield, but there was a lot of running, man. There's too much running. In no, yeah, I don't. Like, that's why I didn't like it. <laughs> All right, so yes, we have a girl soccer no team. No one asks me what sports uh, I yeah, played. Yeah, what sports did you play? You played mental I, gymnastics. I was on the academic decathlon that is not team. A sport. We had varsity jackets and a pep rally. Wow. <laughs> You're like, uh, so in me- you felt seen in Mean Girls when they were doing the, yes, <laughs> the math for <meets>. sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, but no, but I think this is this is funny because it's sort of touching upon one of the, I think, great appeals of this show and what it's doing really well uh, is that people of a certain age and the people who are 
reviewing the show mm-hmm. are kind of of that age, ours. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, plus minus a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's that range that there was a really funny tweet about the Super Bowl halftime show that, like, if you're mm. between 30 and 50, you're like, this is great. But if you're, like, under or over, yeah. you're, like, kind of confused. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I feel like this might be, like, the same range. Yeah. Like, and um, it really, really, really taps in to the experience of the mid nineties like that yeah. in a, in a very like genuine way. Um, one of the creators had a quote that kind of the exact phrase about like sort of like watching the show and taking it all in was that it was like drinking from a subliminal fire hose. <laughs> and that's how I felt watching the show. It just makes you like, it makes me like, scream on the inside and a lot of it is the music which we'll get into yeah um and a lot of it is the just the design uh the aesthetics of the 90s that they really just get right it doesn't look cheesy yeah you know no. what I mean? it looks it looks you good you think about they, other they shows that are popular right now that also deal in the aesthetics of the 90s that feel more like you know like cultural tourism mm. you know like um uh impeachment the monica Lewinsky show or um uh, Pam and Tommy, which we're really <laughs> in, enjoying right so now. Um, which they're both great, but they're much more like, look at this and look at this. <laughs> oh, we're in the '90s fun, <laughs> but also problematic. Right. Um, <laughs> and I love that in Yellow Jackets. Yeah, it's much subtler. It's a hundred percent there. It informs everything, but in in part because you know most of the time they're not actually in the '90s. They're in the woods. Yeah. Right. It, it's it's more of a like a, a subtle like infusion of that 90s nostalgia and I think it's very effective yeah Yeah. I think we're gonna do if you haven't seen the show I think we'll kind of ramble about it generally for a bit and then go into a little bit of a spoilery section maybe yes I think I think Um, we will get into it so that will be highlighted when we get there (laughs) <laughs> I'll try very hard to just do like speculation. Yeah, there's a lot of speculation of because the, it, in the first yeah. part, but yeah, big spoilers. We'll we'll keep them yeah. till the end because really you don't want to be spoiled for some stuff. Okay, so you're sort of introduced to like what you think is a main character, but this is an ensemble show. Mm-hmm. But we really truly are following uh, the drama of Shauna, played by Melanie Linsky. As a as an adult, as an adult. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and by Sophie Nelise as a youngster, and uh, and her f- best friend Jackie. I think yeah, I think that is for season one. While it is an ensemble, they kind of become well, they I say, <laughs> um, Jackie and Shauna. Shauna specifically is kind of like the in. Yeah, but I think it's one of those things where you're kind of introduced to certain characters first. Mm-hmm. And that's why. But they... It's true. But I don't know. I mean, I think maybe it'll be different in season two where they will introduce, like, further characters. But, you know, here, like, the mains in the 2021 plot line are Shauna, a.k.a. Melanie Linsky, Thaisa, played by Tawny Cypress, Natalie, played by the great Juliette Lewis, and Misty, Played by Christina Ricci. Also great. Oh, they're also all, great. Oh, I mean, they're right. all great guys. I, lo- I, I mean, I'm with you with the standing of Juliette Lewis. Yeah, she's I, a special effect. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly how I feel about her. There's literally nobody with her physicality like in the world. Right. Like, it is like very specific and incredible. Yeah. And just like yeah, she's she's so expressive. It's yeah. wonderful to see her on TV. Yeah, I mean, like, from the trailer, that's who made me want to watch the show. I was like, oh, Julia Lewis is in this? Great. But also, it up. looks crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, like, out of those, Shauna is the one that you're sort of, like, really, really following first, and therefore, like, you kind of think that... She feels, like, like the, the main, main And in some ways, like, in 2021, she does function as a kind of, like, axle of the wheel that everybody yeah. else revolves around. Mm-hmm. She's kind of the leader, though I yeah. that's, that's debatable. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, even talking about a leader <laughs> kind of brings you into spoilery territory. <laughs> um, but, yeah, um, I love seeing Melanie Linsky playing Shauna. I think she's perfect for this. Um, 
you know, like, I've always loved her going back to Heavenly Creatures. And I feel like this is such a funny kind of hearkening back to, like, how we first met her, you know, yeah. as this, like, ordinary teen girl. Oh, but, shit. But... Also. <laughs> oh, no, also, you're right. Maybe a murderer. Not, well, not maybe. <laughs> Sorry for the Heavenly Creatures. Well, that's based on real life, so it's okay. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that is just her effect. She has this kind of gentle, ordinary, relatable quality, but beneath it, is mm. something else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think yeah. she does get a lot of those kind of roles too where it's she's can be like the, you know, nice, you know, wife person. Right, she was just in Don't, uh, look, Don't up. look Up. Yeah. yeah. She's just so good in this role. This has to be like my favorite thing she's ever done. Um I feel like people know her best in the wider universe from Two and a Half Men, right. where she does kind of play like a slightly deranged <laughs> character. <laughs> um, I haven't really seen that much of it, but I kind of went like, good for her. <laughs> like, you know, that's Get that a successful money. show. Yeah. Making bank. I'm not watching this, but hooray. <laughs> um, and I was always mad at Vera for not appreciating her enough. It's true. And now you do. Hooray. But not mm-hmm. only her, uh, I've also never really liked Christina Ricci. Mm. What? I have terrible opinions. This I don't understand fact. how you That's could nuts. even be a person in the 90s yeah. and not like Christina Ricci. I don't. I have a hard time with people who have like alien faces. You do. That's true. You have a very <laughs> narrow view of, of the world of like, yeah, who, who is worth being it, like, on a screen. It genuinely scares me. Like I was genuinely scared when I first saw Arya she Stark. Has the Arya face. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, the big, the big, eye. the big no, eyes. But yeah. And but scary. like the, the, you know, the, the face shape. And so I've never, you know, like <laughs> the Adams family doesn't do anything for me ever. What? And, yeah. Just I'm not really a fan. What? Okay. We're going to, we're going to be rewatching the Adams family. And Adam's Family Values because I think you might not remember them. I think you will absolutely adore those movies if you watch them now. I, I think guess. You, I think you need I don't to. Know. I think number one, the greatest OTP of all time, <laughs> like uh, like unreal in those movies. <laughs> Angelica Houston and Raul Julia. Insane. How, I mean, this is a real tangent, but I'm mad now. <laughs> I used to also How watch, I watched like the Coast old movie. show too. I've seen a lot of Adam's Family Weird. in my life. Even okay. though you don't it like just, it. It's scary. They scare me. They're, they're like, supposed they, to they're be dark. Scary. And yeah, I don't like that. Fun. You're going to watch it now. We're going to watch it <laughs> oh, later. Gonna... Well, I was going to say that this is the, like, truly the only Christina Ricci thing that I, like, I love her. What about this. Now and Then? Yellow I have to, that's the one, like okay, now and then, I have to rewatch Now and Then because I don't remember. I love that. I actually yeah, do evil need to now and it. then. Why doesn't anyone describe <laughs> yellow jackets that way? <laughs> well, it's more of a framing device. Yeah, now that's and true. Then. Yeah, this, we should forth. say that yellow jackets. One of the things I love most about it is that it really gives equal import to the teenage plotline and the adult plotline, and they're both equally absorbing. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You're never totally. like, I'll go back to the kids. I want to see whether they're going to be cannibals. You're always like, no, I want to know what the adults are going to do. Yeah. Um, and a part of that is they've cast such great actresses in those yeah. adult parts. It's, it's really fantastic. So if you guys know the characters, like you might know that, well, we haven't mentioned it, adult Jackie. She's not a part of <laughs> the adult plot line, but she sure is a huge part of the the teen one. Yeah, there's a there's um, a lot of characters who we don't quite know yet. Right, you still as well. have to fill out a whole so soccer team. Yeah. Yeah. The show has like kind of deliberately started with this like four mm-hmm. main. I was just going to call it a trio. <laughs> That's not the word. These, these four main characters and clearly is, is going to expand out. Um, so there's like, you know, you got your A team. We'll call them the A team. Mm-hmm. And then there's like B team characters. We don't see some of them in the future, but we very early on get um, a reference from a, yeah. a, a reporter character who's like, says something like, a lot of you love to live off the grid. Um, mm, so yeah. just because someone doesn't have an adult version of themselves now, like, doesn't mean that, like, we're not going to see them in the future. Yeah. Because there's a whole bunch of characters um, that don't have them. I'm Man. so excited. Oh, yeah. Lottie. They're coming. They're coming. Oh, my God. That's Beats season two, 100%. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, so. Um, but so these guys, are, uh, the ones we just talked about in the adult plot line are 
the mains, but like in the teen plot line, the I guess what you call the mains, there, there's more of them. Mm, there's right. like a lot more. Of yeah. Them. Well, the teen plot line is more of an ensemble piece, I yeah. would say, than the adult where you're really following just yeah. a few characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So, um, in 1996, the <laughs> yeah. Yellow Jackets are super awesome at soccer, yeah. and they're going to go to nationals. Hooray! So uh, one of the characters is super rich. Her name is Lottie, and her dad chartered them a private jet, mm-hmm. and they're going to be flying to, where I don't even remember, the show is set in New Jersey. They're going, they going to, like, to like Washington Oregon or, something? Or, or, yeah. yeah, or something like that. Yeah. Washington. Yeah, the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, they'd have to or... fly over Canada. Yeah, because yeah. there's, like, a bad storm or something, so... So going around they're going it. around it in <laughs> over some intense Canadian woods, um, and oops, they crash. Oops, oops, <laughs> and somehow almost all of the adults are the only people killed in the crash. Yeah, there was like I don't know, was there a stewardess on there or a flight I think attendant? So. There they must have a been. few. Yeah. yeah, yeah, there's the pilots. They were killed. That you know, flight attendant, the um, coach, the coach, but the I guess assistant coach was not. Mm-hmm. And that was already when the show was beginning to kind of subvert the expectations I had for it. Because you assume when you when you see that kind of uh, premise, you're like, okay, all the adults are going to be killed. And we're <laughs> going to have the Lord of the Fly situations with right. the soccer with the soccer team. Uh, but then actually, an adult character is spared, and um, yeah. that does create some leadership tension in the group. Yeah, I mean, subverting expectations is the fact that. His leg was crushed underneath some plain parts, mm-hmm. and um, Misty completely chops it off. Yeah, and they had some With an axe. Yeah, ah! the axe looked like Buffy's like scythe, and like I was <laughs> like, did. what kind of some axe is this? Scythe. It's so crazy. I know where did it come from on the plane? I was like, I understand, like maybe there's some kind of like fire axe, but it yeah, looked insane. It did. Um, I think. Well, you're getting into um, one of the things that's so brilliant about the pilot. Which we should mention was directed by Karen Kusama. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm. There's a lot of good pedigree um, in this. So many cool people involved in this show. Um, Karen Kusama directed a lot of stuff. Most relevant for this, I think, is Jennifer's Body, mm. which is so underrated and so fantastic yeah. um, as a horror movie. Girl and fight. Kind of, kind she, of, she found Michelle Rodriguez. I feel Jackie Rodriguez. Shauna is a little bit of a similar relationship to the the, the co leads of Jennifer's Body. That you know, mm. that popular girl and her best friend who's yeah. chafing under the. That's that was yeah. kind of shippy though, and like I originally thought Jackie Shauna was like the Gonna thing. Be the ship. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, actually, Sean is just so sick of Jackie that he yeah. very quickly, like, not shipping them. <laughs> but um, I think, well, and I just wanted to mention that, and then we can come back to it if we want. But um, that the pilot, and it's just called Pilot, which is funny. Oh, nowadays. is it like... I don't know. There's, there's don't a plane involved. I, and also, um, like, yeah, I thought you were talking about the pilots of the plane. No. But no, you are talking about the episode. Um, but, um... You know, when you're talking about Misty immediately kind of, like, jumping into action. The first episode is kind of like a tour de force in setting up all of these characters. And, like, you see each one in the past. You see each one in the present. Um, The scenes, like, are written and edited together in such that you, like, you will go from one small one right to, like, their face in the same place, like, as an adult, you know, match cutting to their face. Mm -hmm. Um, So you very quickly know who is who. And the casting is so good that, like, you would get it anyway. Yeah, Even without some of that stuff, um, but like you know immediately, something's up with Misty, and you know immediately she's gonna be really good <laughs> out here <laughs> in the wilderness. Her true, um, her true milieu. Yeah, yeah. Um, even in in on the soccer field, like when yeah, Misty's not a player, she's like no. the, the water boy manager. <laughs> yeah, but there's yeah. like an injury, and she's. Like my right favorite there. detail is like she's like losing it like at the pep rally, you know. Yeah. Everybody else is like, "Yay, yellow jackets!" and she's just like, ah! yeah. "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah." So I really love that about the pilot. Like you really you you meet each character in a place where you know stuff is going to start to unravel. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we meet Natalie in rehab. Yep. Um, Thaisa is running for political office state senator. senator. Yeah. Um, yeah. Misty has become a nurse yeah, in a nursing a, yep. home. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, <laughs> um, and then Shauna sort of this like dis- sad housewife yeah. figure who I don't think works. Right. No. Right. Yeah. yeah the, that's her a husband. Good point. Even like though they have didn't... financial problems. Yeah. Yeah. I did, I <laughs> well, don't that's why the think... store's inventory is so important. <laughs> don't think she was working. Um, but yeah, you you very quickly like see who they were yeah. and where they are now, mm-hmm. and very much want to know how right. they got yep. from there exactly to here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, back to your point of like surprises. <laughs> I was very surprised that Coach Ben survived yeah. his his leg wound which is you right. know they they use like some rubbing alcohol on it and that's it <laughs> and yeah. like, is a really good caretaker <laughs> like she made sure that man survived what did she she did the like babysitting like red cross course and like she twice, said, twice. Yeah. yeah and so she, you know exactly who she is this character <laughs> so yeah so part of um part of her thing is that like her so the social order like changed because her skills are like the most important in the woods, and now she has like some respect, I guess. I identified with Misty, maybe as the non-sporty one, you know, <laughs> her her trying to fit in and you know failing co- constantly, like um, you know, it's awkward and and cringeworthy, but but you know, so relatable. And yeah, the, this whole like you know genius idea that she, yeah she realizes finally like a survival situation is a place where she yeah. she can blossom right yeah yeah because it's immediately what happens is like what happens you're taking all of these teenage girls and two teen boys and one yes twenty something yeah I guess man, he must be coach, yeah. um, and throwing them in a place where that social order of high school doesn't need to exist but it's what they know so what happens when that whole thing is is taken away and the show does like a fantastic job of just following Mm -hmm. these teens um especially like shauna and jackie like their relationship is so interesting with like how it just feels really realistic of like these two friends that are like keeping secrets from each other, but they're, like, kind of codependent, and they're, like, but they're growing apart, but they're going to college, and, like, how is this all going to work in the woods? <laughs> yeah. Um, and Jackie is the team captain, um, but is clearly 100% not cut out to be team captain of the woods. She is not. Um, not even maybe team captain <laughs> of the soccer team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Judging by the pilot. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Oh, just a quick aside. Can I do him a quick nerdy aside? Sure. Um, Ella Purnell, who plays Jackie, uh, is also the voice oh, of yeah. a one of the main uh, characters on the new Star Trek show for kids, Star Trek Prodigy. I think her character's name is Gwyn, I think. Um, and I was second screening the show, and when you're not looking, I can't. I was just the, her little alien character was talking in my, and it was like because her their voice just sounds so much like you know it is her voice. So it was really funny because um, I don't think I knew that the first time around, so it wasn't really registering. And then I knew, and then I couldn't unhear it. <laughs> and so I keep hearing her adorable Star Trek cartoon character whenever she speaks. <laughs> She's great. Yeah, I, I love the character of Jackie. It, you know, when you first see her, you kind of assume it's going to be a bit, you know, a bit mean girls. Like, she's the popular girl, and you're going to see her in the woods losing her shit. And I feel like it both is that, but also is so much more nuanced and, like, psychologically mm-hmm. grounded. Like, you feel mm-hmm. bad for her immediately. Because, yeah, you can tell even from the pilot, that she just does not have the kind of social control over the group that she thinks she does. Mm. Yeah. Um, I also thought that there would be, like, fighting over the teenage boy that is there with them, but there really wasn't. Really. It was, like, yeah. kind of a, a relationship formed between mm-hmm. Travis and Natalie, and for the most part, it was, you know, everybody, like, respected it and didn't try to, like, steal him away or anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess yeah. it helped that some of them were gay, so. <laughs> right on. Yeah. Well, should we talk about them? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, first, like, the Travis and Natalie stuff is part of the um, adult plot line that I do want to give, like, a, a brief shout out while we're talking about plot and character stuff where her character is really sad and going through a lot and kind of 
um, as I said, Jewelous. starts off in rehab and immediately mm-hmm. undoes all that. Yeah. Um, and um, had clearly had some kind of continuing relationship with Travis. They become, and they're all four of them, like, are really embroiled in this sort of mysterious plot that's also going on mm-hmm. in the future, which some of it is really weird and gets resolved, and then some of it doesn't. Yeah. Um, and that's the stuff in the show that made me the most nervous as, like, someone who's, like, watched Lost <laughs> and yeah, the Exos and things like that. Sure. However, I would like to say that it does seem like, and I know I feel like we've heard this before, but it does seem like <laughs> the two showrunners... <laughs> have a plan and know what they're doing and are putting stuff in um, knowing generally where it's going to go. So some of that stuff with Travis and Natalie, that stuff is really interesting. And then there's like some bribery stuff and mysterious other shenanigans. Yeah. Um, and it did make me nervous when we were watching. Because mm-hmm. I was like, is this going to be good? Is this going to be dumb? Do <laughs> well, they know what this yeah, is? It's hard because, you know, we didn't start watching the show right away. We watched as, like, right when it was really beginning to catch fire um, on social media. Yeah. And so much, I mean, this is true, I think, of all kind of, I'm going to say mystery box shows, but I don't think it's fair to call Yellow Jackets yeah, it's, a mystery box show. No, it's not. Um, but, but you often have people really engaging with it, you know, trying to game the system of it. You know, what are you like? They want to solve it. And I I personally was not really doing that with Yellow Jackets. I just loved all the characters. Like the only like problem I was trying to solve was, you know, when will Misty and Natalie kiss? Right. (laughs) Which which is my personal (laughs) shit, especially adult Adult uh, Misty and and Natalie. Um, (laughs) But uh, so so like I was sort of watching bemusedly as people were like, you know, who's that Hitler queen? What about Pit Girl? You know, um, yeah. yeah. And uh, like I I feel like whenever you engage (laughs) with this show from that angle, you will inevitably be disappointed. Yes. Uh, Yes. And and I think Yellow Jackets is great in that to me it doesn't seem that obsessed with the supernatural plot line as, right. as you're saying like it it's there it's obviously informing every all the character drama that's and is going it on even supernatural we don't really know if it's supernatural <laughs> at this point it is kind of <laughs> straddling that line yeah. where we'll see for me it's it's actually about the character relationships that that the supernatural is putting pressure on and i think the show gets that like it's never trying to just like surprise you with something crazy which i think other mystery mystery box shows eventually kind of make that mistake of being like well we can have people do something out of character because whoa it's crazy mythology (laughs) you know don't worry about it um and i i just don't think yellow jackets will do that i don't they are so focused on like those girls and who they are and who they want to be yeah Mm -hmm. but they did introduce a lot of elements and Mm -hmm. and there's a lot uh, i mean a lot uh, because there are so many theories out there, yeah, and they were not—they weren't expecting. They weren't expecting um, s- sh- certain people, or, like the well, the fans, to like the showrunners. Yeah, expecting. analyze like so much of it and um, pick up on like so much of it. But I don't know. Uh, it's hard not to yeah. when there's like clues that you're trained to like focus on of course yeah but yeah my hope is that the showrunners don't get too caught up in that that they're not gonna then try to outwit the fans like if the fans guess that's fine yeah Yeah. i think change something that they were gonna do because people started guessing it and that's when you start getting like actual sloppy storytelling so (laughs) i I don't want ashley and bart (laughs) yeah i literally need to go sit ashley and bart down and have a pep talk be like i'm glad you're so popular but don't mistake this fan engagement for like actual storytelling Yeah. yeah yeah um Ty yep, and Van. Ty and Van. I want to talk about them a little bit. <laughs> Thaisa is fantastic. And the younger teen um, cat, uh, plot line. I was going to say category. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> plot line. Uh, she's played by Jasmine Savoy Brown. Jasmine great. Savoy Brown is everywhere. I yeah. love her. She's so hot right now. <laughs> she is. Yeah. Um, I think she's fantastic. She was in um, The Leftovers and she was in the new Scream 
which is technically Scream 5, which is called Scream, as the new Randy-esque mm-hmm. character. Love, love she her was in great that. in that, yeah. Um, and um, in the adult plot line, she's played by Tawny Cypress. Um, and her, she, like, this plot is, like, her and her wife, and she's running for state senator. Her and they creepy have a son, son, who yeah. we think is creepy, but actually is just being traumatized. But we'll, you'll, you'll see. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and um, in the past plot line, um, her main relationship, well, she's got two things going on. One, she's got an interesting relationship with the forest. <laughs> yep. <laughs> More so than everyone else. And yes. then um, she's also dating the goalie, Van, who we have brought up already. And they're a great little duo. I love them so much. Were they dating before? Or I like, think did so. start? Because I saw that in she, the pilot, there's like some, or in the second episode, there was so. like, like a face caress. And yeah, I was yeah, like. Yeah. Well, they when the plane crashes, she's immediately screaming for Van. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So they were just like dating in secret. I think so. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Um, but just a little shout out to great canon queer characters. Yeah. Because um, I I think there are really great non-canon ships like Shauna and Jackie and Misty um, and Natalie. Natalie. Lottie and Laura Lee. Lottie and Laura Lee is very interesting, mm. too. I should have um, <laughs> But the, their canon queer characters and canon queer relationship um, in the future, um, we don't know where Van is, but um, she's married. <laughs> um, but the they're just really adorable, and I love them. <laughs> yeah. I like Van. You know, as we've sort of been saying, you feel like there are these A-team characters and B-team characters. I think I originally kind of pegged Van as a B-team mm-hmm. in that, yeah. you know, anybody who doesn't have mm-hmm. the, the modern counterpart, day yeah. analog. But Van is really like this emerging character. You see more and more of her. I, I find like that trajectory that she gets where she's slowly kind of getting indoctrinated into Mm -hmm. the supernatural shit that's happening really compelling and and really subtly done like it's seeded through the whole season yeah i was just like the show because i don't think we we sort of talked about this in the beginning like it shows you immediately i don't think this is a big big spoiler it shows you in the first five minutes it opens up on a scene in the future of uh, of them having crashed um, and really showing you that stuff has progressed, sh- progressed <laughs> to a point where there is some weird cult stuff happening, some kind of system that they've set up. Some um, ritual cannibalization? Some ritual, perhaps cannibalism. I yeah. mean, a girl is straight up trapped in a pit. Yeah. <laughs> um, and... Like, I really like that it just starts that way. It's mm-hmm. just like, blam. Yeah. You just know where this is going. It reminded me, I maybe mean, it's just because it was snowing, but it, it had a vibe like Game of Thrones. Like, mm. you just like, here's this like creepy ass thing. Right, even oh, right. the like, yeah. snow, like silent, you know, snowy. It's yeah. going <laughs> somewhere. I wonder if that was weird. an influence. Like, yeah. it just really felt like that to me. Because yeah. it's like, th- that starts with like, here's a, a supernatural weird creature in the woods. Um, so you know it's going, it's going somewhere crazy. Well, I mentioned Lottie and Laura Lee, and they are my favorites. Uh, Vera <laughs> as well. always I, I with the kind of yeah, curveball. the random. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I love everyone, but um, yeah, I I particularly like that, especially because like people uh, on the internet they compared their storyline with Sean and Jackie, and mm. and that was like an interesting parallel to me. Interesting. And like visually, um, certain things were filmed similarly, some huh. dramatic moments, let's just say. Laura Lee is a, a character who's very um, Christian. <laughs> yes. <laughs> very <Correct>. all about <laughs> Jesus yes. and making people like, for instance, they, she's like, we got to say a prayer before we do this and that. Right. And so I wish that actually we knew a, l- a little bit more about, about her. We only got like one sort of flashback to, to that character's origins i guess so far so far yeah and then lottie comes from sort of like a different place where she's very wealthy she's like a maid bring her like medicine clearly that medicine is important for some reason and then in the woods she has no medicine so stuff Mm -hmm. starts happening the visions start happening and whatnot but basically a belief system 
starts happening around mm-hmm. Lottie. So I like that's why I really love the two characters because they were both about like the faith. Yeah, you know, various two faiths. Different two sides. different. Yeah. 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 Of, a, of a coin. Yeah. And then you have Taisa, who's like very fiercely logical, even though her, in her flashbacks it's pretty clear that there's a kind of spirituality that that she has direct mm-hmm. contact with. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I feel like there's a lot going on in the show in terms of, like, faith systems. Yeah. And I have a feeling that's going to be a an emerging theme in later seasons, Absolutely. too. And it's fantastic the way the show is situated in this horror uh, supernatural genre and walks that fine line mm-hmm. of it maybe not being supernatural at all, or maybe yeah. it is. It really does a really good job of having the more horror genre-related elements um, as they pertain to each character individually, really be representative of, and especially like in the future plot line as well, most specifically representative of the trauma that they experience and whatever happened to them yeah. um, in the past yeah. comes up, bubbles up in these weird ways um, for each character. And it's a little different for, for everybody. Everyone, yeah. And, you know, like you said, like Lottie, there's she clearly has medicine for something and when it runs out what's happening yeah. like are we trusting well that didn't we see that, we, in the her in her flashback it was that she she kind of has like premonitions has, right yeah, yeah. With, so as a little girl yeah and, her yeah. and then her parents are like to medicate yes them exactly away. exactly right. yes. and so what's that about <laughs> and you know because that's like the sort of thing where it's like the show seems to especially something like that it seems very clear that it's like that really happened uh, but I don't know, <laughs> you know, um, and Thaisa especially has some very intense stuff. And yeah, everybody has like this something or other, but maybe not Misty. I mean, <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, yeah. Misty um, believes Misty, in Misty. <laughs> Misty seems very happy. Yeah. About, um, and about Andrew Lloyd Webber and, and herself. Yeah. yeah. yeah there's also some of various spirits and ghosts. And, and images that are are conjured up for for everybody. Um, yeah, and yeah, a lot of kind of. I mean, maybe this is part of why the show became so popular. So yeah, there are all these sort of different like things to kind of have a buzzword for. You mm-hmm. know, buzz buzz. buzz. <laughs> man with no eyes, pit girl, antler queen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, hunter man. I don't yep. know hunter. <laughs> I'm not sure what people call that character. Yeah. So they were in the woods for what is it? Nineteen months. Nineteen months. So that's a long time. A okay, long time. that's like good um, for the five-year plan. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, so and the show is so careful at how it advances time. Like mm-hmm. you, I, like I, I wasn't sure what to expect and thought it was going to race into that. You know that first scene of the show we, that we'd eventually see that. Yes, society that had developed, and we're nowhere near that by the end of the season, which right. I think is great. Maybe a step, but close. yeah, a step closer. <laughs> um, but I think that's a great decision on their part to really be careful about how much um, they're parceling out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you don't see them yeah. being rescued. You don't even mm-hmm. see like the first full on winter because the whole time that once they're winter stranded, is winter's coming. Mm-hmm. That was like the whole thing. And then like you see the in the first scene with the uh, you know cannibal ritual that um, it is snowing. It is like full on winter at that point. Right. Um, first, so, the first frost. Yeah. yeah. So you're you're waiting for that, and that never really happens, and then that's totally fine because there's a lot to explore. Um, but I, I was going to kind of go back to the point of the kind of occult and, and whatnot um, that we were talking about in the sense that when, when they crash, they uh, it's not like they have to live in the plane wreck, Mm-mm. you know? They kind of discover a cabin that is exists, mm-hmm. and so they sort of move into that cabin. Which is super surprising to me. Yes. In part because we had pretty recently watched this other show with a very similar uh, premise, The Wilds. Yeah. On, uh, and and, and in The Wilds, I'm going to bring yeah. it back just briefly after for a different topic oh okay cool um the wilds is very different (laughs) from (laughs) yellow jackets even though they have near identical premises it's really funny how how far you can go with i do think that the showrunners said they they saw the wilds announced in deadline while they were developing this and went oh no (laughs) (laughs) but they have like the superior project so yeah i mean you know i i really enjoyed the wilds but it's almost like 
again. Like, well, season two of The Wilds is way less uh, exciting than season <laughs> oh, two yeah. of well, Yellow Jackets. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. see. It's on freeform. It's a different vibe completely um, than Yellow Jackets. Like, it can't go as. Isn't it part? Is it on Prime? Oh, it's on yeah. Amazon. Oh, I thought Prime. it was on Freeform. Free, yeah. You're thinking of Cruel Summer? Of like, yeah. Cruel Which Summer and like Motherland. Yeah. Oh, it is on yes. Amazon Prime. It some could good, go pretty hard if it wanted to. I guess. It could. Um, I don't it, know it, if it, it will. It kind of is, is, I think, more swayed by the mystery box mm-hmm. um, trap. And it uh, already has kind of offered up a <laughs> kind of explanation for everything those girls yeah. go through that is <laughs> deeply unsatisfying. It is. And it's, I, I feel think, like the only way that it's satisfying if you ha- if, you, if you really love the actress Rachel Griffiths, who I happen I to love. And, and, and if you really love pugs. <laughs> oh my God, so, the pugs. like, it's I just find it very amusing. But yeah, it is. The characters in the wilds are great. And this is a funny little yeah. tangent. Like, I mean, they are very similar shows so I completely yeah. understand yeah. Uh, Ashley Lyle freaking out <laughs> seeing that <laughs> in Deadline um, but yeah I do feel like Yellow Jack is just immediately um, swerves away from all those expected tropes of like where are we gonna find shelter and like no they just find shelter um, right yeah it's just a creepy house but even the like the Lord of the, the Lie the Lord of the Flies right. like aspect they, yeah they, they don't yeah really they don't really go, go there, there. and I, at first I I I remember as a viewer I was almost disappointed I was like oh this is so easy now they have like a <laughs> cabin yeah. um but I feel like it allows you to almost immediately just leap into the the interpersonal drama more yeah. like it's not yeah. obviously they are still struggling with the elements but they're also kind of playing house mm-hmm. in this way that is mm-hmm. is immediately yeah. fun yeah <laughs> but the cabin um introduces uh, a character who owned the cabin i mean he's not like part of the show but his mysticism is mm-hmm. uh a which presence. is yeah sure. presence. presence and um and these like symbols that are like uh, in that area some on the trees Blair and whatnot. Shit. yeah, some some yeah, weird he's shit. Got a creepy book. Yeah, so like that is a, that's already like that exists, yeah. and so you can spend your you know year trying to figure out what that is. <laughs> but I I just really love that like the kind of culty aspect of the the show that these girls start experiencing. Um, it comes from something it's not like they you know invented it right it's like already there and it, they absorb it and then it's like now did this cabin guy was he there because something exists in these woods or this is like the twin peaks aspect of it like is this like to me is this the evil of man or is this the evil of nature mm. well or is it like just in mm. uh folk horror like the that area is like you know, the fault mm. lines in the earth right. yeah. create a, a thing where you can't, f- the planes crash in, yeah. in that area, Are in that particular in the spot. Wrong spot. Right? Yeah. Like the planes can't leave. They can't, do, you know, mm-hmm. this and that. I mean, obviously they get rescued. So <laughs> clearly some, <laughs> something, something's going to happen. <laughs> somehow they're going to get out. I also think it's different to have them not be on an island. Yes, so we called it the island when we were watching yeah, it. We were like, they're stuck on an just island. We couldn't imagine that they weren't stuck on an island. It's so hard not to call yeah. it the island. <laughs> but yeah, it's a contiguous landmass. So yeah. I mean, they could just walk away and but, you know, they yes. they'll get into yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Later yeah. in this season. Too far. Yeah. Where are they? <laughs> which way is which? Exactly. Oh. Right. So moving away from Twin Peaks, but um, keeping it in the '90s. Mm-hmm. Uh, this show has the most fucking fantastic soundtrack yes. ever. Yes, it does. It really has, like, I would say, good taste in music. Oh, it does. Oh, my God. So I don't, the only reason I was going to bring up The Wilds again is because it's the same music <laughs> I was wondering. Um, uh, so Jen Malone and her company, I am so envious of this this job um she she also does yeah she also does the wilds but i will also say for you guys um you watch this and i don't she's also the music supervisor on euphoria oh, oh wow. shit so yeah. i think she's yeah. having a time so she is this is her yeah, she's time. controlling 
Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. yeah, music. Um, yeah, uh, I know. And there was another. There was another name too. Now I forget. Ah, but I know it's like her and her company. Um, and she, yeah, she's a music supervisor on Yellow Jackets and Euphoria, among other stuff. Zola, the movie. Oh my oh, gosh. Uh-huh. Oh, like she really does have impeccable um, taste. Yeah. 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 And the Wilds and, and stuff. Um, and the Wilds also has some really fun. Yeah. Needle yeah, drops. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Um, but the needle drops in this show are they really are a part of the show so intensely yeah. that like I mean I, there's an article called this but I think I would have said it anyway that it is a character mm-hmm. like unto itself um, the way that they use music in this show isn't just like oh 90 song ha 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 yeah. like sounds good like for you know window dressing or whatever like almost every single choice serves the moment so beautifully Mm -hmm. and it's also like really good songs from the 90s and even when they're not like the best songs from the 90s (laughs) they're like so perfect for the scene Mm -hmm. like i think i don't know if it's i don't think it's spoiler to talk about needle drops like what are some of the best ones (laughs) there's a there's a this isn't a needle drop but can i can i mention the use of one of the worst earworms of the 90s oh god which is um misty has an infatuation with uh coach ben um, who uh, we know is actually gay. <laughs> um, and she is helping him go to the bathroom. And to help him go to the bathroom, start singing Breakfast at Tiffany, <laughs> which is about a couple having nothing in common together. Yeah. <laughs> and it is the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, so that's just like a little a little thing. That's but like in a way, that's a great example. The yeah. actual like um, just when they use music, it is so perfect. Um, I love it so much. I yeah. don't even know. This is like the thing that goes into like your like primordial. Mm-hmm. I was a teen in the 90s brain. I think it's what, like, really just, like, zaps, like, all the electricity in my head (laughs) when, like, the songs kick in. Like, they run out, you know, uh, into the pep rally, and you're like, I I think I ran out into a pep rally to the same song, (laughs) you know? Um, That kind of stuff. Karin Kasama talked about um, one of her favorites was, like, in, in the pilot, she was really happy that they, like, Secured the rights for like a cover of um, In Excess, uh, Never Tear Your Part, like for mm-hmm. the big montage, kind of like as right the, as the, as the kids, the as, yeah, as everybody's yeah. getting ready to go on the plane, which is like an important montage because it, it gave you just like little hints of like everyone's life at that point, but very like important hints. Um, so she was really into that. Um, I really enjoyed uh, the... PJ Harvey usage. I was thinking of mm-hmm. that too. Yeah. It's just so spooky. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like that's an important element of the show oh, to so get spooky. started right away. And the score yeah. too has yeah. just this really, really spooky quality with like f- feminine sounding <laughs> vocals. Yeah. Like that is just kind of you know ritualistic shit yeah yeah, yeah. yep it's <laughs> it really gets under your skin so yeah it's good stuff yeah but i thought that like the whenever you know you watch like a panel with the actors and everybody um they always mention pj harvey bringing it back and what i really loved uh was that both sophie thatcher and Juliette Lewis, like their ins to the characters were creating playlists. Yeah, it makes perfect <laughs> sense. Yeah. Yes, I thought it's such a you... Natalie thing to do. Yeah, yeah, it's so great, and it's such a Juliette Lewis thing yeah. to do because she's always like, "I have a playlist." <laughs> yeah. No, I want. I, I love when actors do that. Number one, but number two, I thought. I think yeah, we were watching the same interview, and they had both put some of the same stuff mm-hmm. independently. Yeah. So um, on their playlists for Natalie, inclu- yep. including like really obscure stuff um, that I think Juliette Lewis was surprised that Sophie Thatcher mm. even knew about being, yeah, you I, know, a I, tiny baby born in <laughs> yes. the year 2000 or whatever. Um, I love that so much because like you can you can tell yeah. that they like really understood mm-hmm. like that character on a you know fundamental level, even when they're like not talking to each other about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think of the kind of, you know, we have these four partnerships mm-hmm. of you know of a- actresses creating a character and i think like obviously they're all amazing but for me there is something super compelling about the sophie uh juliet 
combo mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they're so different as yeah. actors. Like mm -hmm. everybody else, I think is kind of like there's more in common, like physically, where you can really like see the character at all times. But I feel with um, Juliette Lewis, she's just so specific. The way she talks, the way she moves. Yeah. Like <laughs> I, I love that Sophie didn't Sophie Thatcher, I should say, because there are two Sophies yeah. in our cast. Um, Sophie Thatcher doesn't fall into the trap of trying to mimic her, which would be yeah. so easy to do. Like you know, do Juliette Lewis impression. Um, <laughs> But um, no, she just somehow, they both find yeah. the essence of the character. And it's a very different essence because you mm -hmm. can tell that of the characters, Natalie really is going to like yeah. go through a transformation over time. And um, like it just works in this way yeah. where you just feel like you almost can't even put your finger on why because they are not doing an imitation. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's like the, their, the various duos and their processes is so fascinating as well. Like who kind of did anything? Who who didn't do anything? <laughs> you know, like um, Sophie Nelise, and uh, she had to like physically look like Melanie Linsky because she was like the most like not She's like blonde that. and blue eyed. Yeah, um, and like you know have oh got to quickly call. Are you left handed or right handed? Yeah, you know, they were. They seemed very interested in yeah, sort of the the physicality and yeah. yeah. Jasmine and uh, Tawny Cypress, I guess, <laughs> lived near each other and like really spent a lot of time together. Um, I think house it for with each the other. cats. Yeah, yeah their cats. The cats. That's right. Um, and they like really talked about it like thoroughly um, and kind of planned out certain like body movements and whatnot. Um, and then. I think Christina Ricci and um, they have they have the same move with the glasses, which I yeah. just did. <laughs> which, which they said they did it um, independently. independently. Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, so see, that's, that's what you're really like, saying. Exactly. Someone, yeah, someone told um, Samantha handwriting that Christina was doing that, and so it made her do it more. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, but so it's great. very interesting because they they don't have scenes together, obviously. Yes, yes exactly. Um, so, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like, when you're making a show, it's like, they really could go the whole time unless you're doing, like, you know, a read-through or something, mm -hmm. like, without seeing each other. And not, but obviously, out too, that this season of this show was made during COVID times. They actually mm -hmm. filmed the pilot before yeah. and had to break for a whole year <laughs> to <laughs> film the rest of the show. Um, so yeah, they didn't probably see each other mm -hmm. very much at all or, or in person, you know? Yeah, so I believe just, their like table reads were over Zoom. So, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so I think that just the, the cohesiveness of, um, the younger and older versions of the characters is fantastic, like through the writing, editing, and performance. Um, just and all casting. fantastic. And the casting is, casting, casting is insane, yeah. Yeah. Out of control, good. It is so good. That's why it's like season two with some of the older versions of right. You know, are we gonna like, start getting too like you know this when you start getting too in the weeds about everything? Are we gonna be disappointed because you're gonna see something first and you'd be like, that's not what I had in mind. I don't really have or anybody like, in mind specifically, <laughs> uh, but I just want them to be really good. Yeah, yeah I'm sure course. they will. I'm sure yeah, they, they have, will be. They you know, will be. And they clearly have ideas for um, people that they're reaching out to. We just don't know who they are yet. I guess. <laughs> I think it would be great if it was just not revealed and... If they could, I mean, if they but could it keep would the never secret, happen. yeah, I mean, yeah. Especially if they do try to follow this formula of finding a, a you know, a, an adult actress who was a famous teen in the nineties. Yeah. <laughs> I will tell you something. I actually, honestly, forgot that Christina Ricci was in the show. And so when we were watching it and she appeared like more towards the end, I was like, oh, holy shit. Like, I, took her, I was like, this, is good. this guest is so good. So it would be nice to have like another moment like that. Yeah. But I feel like no. that, never <laughs> that was yeah. just me like forgetting. No, because it's like um, big now. They're going to do these big, but, big announcements. I but think. yeah, oh my God, everything about it just works. So let's talk about, let's get in the weeds, shall yeah, we? Yeah, so this is the so spoiler um, section. This, into a more fully yeah. spoiler. Um, I think like if you haven't seen it and you want to get spoiled, keep listening. There are are some really big spoilers that it's better not to know about um but if you are spoiled and you know about it then maybe you don't have to watch it again you'll see yeah. <laughs> everything or or going. maybe the spoiler will make you want to watch um, it mm -hmm. but if you don't want to be spoiled um please stop now we're gonna talk about some some more needle drops and some some big 
occurrences and maybe like our own little speculations. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Cannibals. <laughs> yeah. Well, for we, we need to talk about that a little bit, but definitely what is happening is I think that everybody is going to clearly divide there's going to be a big dividing line yeah. between the Once people. cannibalism is introduced. Team yes. cannibalism. Can- team and cannibals. Yeah. And yeah. Team, team starving in the wilderness. <laughs> don't eat us. Because um, yeah. it does start with, like we said, um, this opening sequence of a girl being chased. Mm-hmm. Um, she falls into a pit that's been set up. Very good pit. Um, <laughs> she it, has the gold heart chain necklace she, that a, Jackie is wearing at yeah, the beginning. It's got, she's wearing a necklace that we see Shauna give Jackie. Um, but then by the end of the season, it's back with Shauna? Is it? Question mark? I don't remember <laughs> that. I don't know. Um, and that girl dies in this pit, and then we see a bunch of people in uh, fur and antler outfits, yeah. and they're eating some meat and cooking some meat, <laughs> pulling that meat apart and chomping down with their teeth. Um, <laughs> really great. Very effective. Um, it's interspersed throughout the first the episode. First episode yeah. um, and you get these little clues. You see shoe, like you see people's shoes. This is stuff we really get in the weeds. Yeah, like, like who's Converse wearing these is. Converse. Converse. Yeah. Um, there's, but you find um, out. It's, it's misty. Yeah. Well, the do. Converse's, I think, are Van. Van is there for sure. Oh, really? I yeah. believe so. She, well, yeah. for one, we know pink that. Converse's? Have we ever see this in the show? I think a a lot of people have Converse's. But pink ones? I don't think Van has pink ones. That's what I thought was about the pink. Van has like a specific, like something new. Is that what was the the name? It's a jersey. Yeah. She's wearing like a shirt. shirt There's a specific shirt. Yeah, you definitely see Van's shirt in in the um, cannibal. And and we know by the end, um, at least three people specifically who are the starting this cult the acolytes yeah. <laughs> um for sure mm-hmm. um i love that beginning so much it just really just sucks you right in and then and, the reveal at the end of, of it's funny that we're like spoiler corner okay now we're going to talk about the pilot in detail <laughs> well, sorry, but, um, <laughs> but um the, the reveal at the end of the pilot that misty is one of these masked yeah. cannibals and i love the, in this reveal you see her you know <laughs> gleefully demented misty face yeah and she like puts on the glasses yeah to be like that's right it's me <laughs> but they're busted so yeah you gotta i mean to it's been look 19 out. months yeah, you yeah. To, well you don't know when this that's, takes we, place i assume it's really late in the game could be you, middle. You, you think it's middle <laughs> yeah could be middle. that's true that would be a classic yellow jackets yeah. move to I get mean, to the thing we saw at the beginning the and cult then is already going. starting yeah. in the beginning so yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Two of the bigger plot lines um, with some mysteries built in that were, like, my favorites. Um, I'll start with, there's the um, Thaisa one, which is that she, like, I, I alluded to her having a relationship with the forest, but you find out that basically we are unaware of how much she knows or is intentionally doing things. But we find out that she is doing some crazy ritual, animal slaughter. Oh, I peed this (laughs) Don't Um, get attached. (laughs) And um, is, has like a, creepy cult altar in her basement um and she wins as her all election. politicians probably do um and we and you there's these seeds throughout um that are weaved in with her son who we think the son is doing all this stuff they think that he's acting out they think he's like you they're know, like he's weird he's weird he's they thought he like painted on their door and he's like drawing creepy kid pictures like you know when mm-hmm. in a movie when a kid is having some kind of ghost disturbance they're gonna draw <laughs> yep. the creepy the pictures, creepy, creepy pictures uh, a woman outside like his that. window stares at um, him but yes really what's happening is that ty in the night is doing stuff either 
and it seems like very unbeknownst to her yeah, that she'll like wake up sleepwalking yeah. in the middle of it. She wakes up one night, she's in a tree eating her own hand. Yeah. Um, and she also she's a vegetarian. Dirt. <laughs> yeah. so dirt, hands. She's, um, and yeah. you see that also happen to her in the past. And um, the kid kind of alludes to you that there's a woman in the trees who watches him at night. And this poor kid this whole time knows it's his mom, knows yeah. it's her, calls her like the good one. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, I wish he could just have been like, you why are you in the tree at night, mom? Like, or something. Um, but it's really creepy. It's really scary. It's really well done. And, like, the reveal of it was just like, ah, because yeah. I didn't even put it together when one yeah. of the girls runs out and, like, find, like sees. It's really brief flash, and it's very weird looking, and you just see young Ty eating dirt. Well, first you have the yeah. clue, like, her hands are dirty. Right? Yeah. And they're like, And it's know. like, what is happening in, what? It, what the hell is happening? already to her um, which is independent from any kind of cult formation that she's going out in the middle of the night to eat dirt crazy so like there's that I thought that was really well done and like very surprising I didn't guess any of that stuff and then um, the stuff with Shauna in the future and Jackie and their relationship as kids mm-hmm. is probably my favorite part of the show, but I'm also just like really, really partial to Melanie Linsky. <laughs> I love her so much. I love her performance in this of this person who is just haunted by guilt and you don't know what the fuck happened. You just have no clue. Um, it's very, it seems clear when you're watching it that Jackie is dead. Um, she goes to every year Jackie's house with her parents and who almost treat her like a surrogate daughter. Yeah, it's a um, very weird it's situation. So weird. She she marries Jeff, who mm. is Jackie's high school boyfriend. Who it, we see in the '90s, Shauna was also <laughs> uh, sleeping with, um, and Jackie was not. Um, right. So like all these secrets that they have behind their back, like even as kids. Um, and the ways in which, like, Jackie, I'm sorry, Shauna was sort of growing apart from Jackie. Jackie wanted her to go to, you know, the same school with her. There was, she thought they were going to go to Rutgers. They played, you know, soccer, do all this stuff. And you, you find out, you know, Jackie finds out that she had been sleeping with Jeff and, like, she, you know, Shauna's like, I don't even like soccer. And, like, oh. you know, just, just all this stuff. This is, like, really great, like, teen girl stuff. Um, that's like sort of interspersed throughout, but then, you know, future Shauna, who is married to Jeff, um, has a kid with Jeff and all this stuff. You're like, well, what has, has happened in the past, um, to make her be this way? Um, another thing I didn't mention, sorry, I'm doing a little bit of a Shauna ramble, um, but she's also pregnant yeah. as, as a, Jeff's as a teen with Jeff's baby. baby. She's um, pregnant on the, which, on the which island. Which is going to be... <laughs> <laughs> which <laughs> clearly is going to be a problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, so so throughout the future plot line, you see her have these flashes of, of Jackie um, as a ghost who kind of like talks to her in these little moments, um, you know, and they're very creepy and strange um and then you you come to find out in the in the season finale that this sort of big bubbling up of all of the issues that they've been having together leads them to have this you know very understandable argument um of them finally saying all this stuff to each other that leads to jackie spending the night outside and having hypothermia and dying and it's so sad. It is sad. It is so sad, like, to, to you know, to, you know, be these young kids with sort of these actual young kid problems um, that lead to something so tragic. Um, it's just so sad. And I thought that the actress, um, Sophie Nelise, was so good mm-hmm. in the um, mm-hmm. scene where she wakes up and, and finds Jackie. Yeah, and I'm sure there's more. We don't even know... Um, we don't know the extent of all the stuff that Shauna has even done um, because there's another plot line where she's having kind of a, an affair with a different character that gets murdered and it's just, oh that my God. That plot line is <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> um, but I just, you love, I love the way like kind of her paranoia and, and trauma just sort of leads to this other horrific thing in her future. So you mentioned uh, Shauna's reaction to Jackie's death and mm-hmm. this is uh that sort of parallel i was talking about before about um 
Lottie mm. and Laura Lee, who tragically Laura Lee um, decides to yeah <laughs> decides to be really brave and take out a plane that was like from that they found like with this like lodge that they like live in now. Uh, she wanted to get help, and oops, it explodes because you cannot leave. Yeah, it's like a little two-person plane. Kind yeah, of thing. a little Cessna situation. Um, and they had that really interesting relationship where sort of, I, I want to say, like, Laura Lee made it be, you know, she gave her a baptism and, like, basically made it be okay for her to, like, believe or, mm-hmm. like, start this belief system. Little, well, not, d- little does yeah, she know. <laughs> exactly what um, she, Lottie would take that in a, a different direction. And my favorite thing is that re- uh, religion, I guess, um, and how organically it came about. Like, again, nothing was like, okay, one morning they wake up and it's like, we're going to... Worship the tree. Exactly. <laughs> it was just like little things, little things here and there, and it, it, it kind of snowballs. Yeah. Into, the seance is a big turning point. Yeah, the seance, but like, you know, they already see these symbols. Um, Lottie runs out of her medication, starts seeing things, and she starts like predicting things that are correct, um, saves lives, saves man's life with some talismans and, and whatnot. <laughs> and ultimately, like, this will become kind of like an, an an organic situation where they're being cannibals and doing rituals, and it's totally fine. And and then it seemingly grows into a full blown cult, which the which I'm plot, very excited which about. Which I somehow didn't yeah. see coming. I, I did not I, see even that it coming. Seems so obvious in retrospect. Yes, yes, I feel yeah. really dumb about yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, getting little postcards. Yeah, yeah. Get, there's yeah. postcards introduced with the Creepy thing. Blair so Witch yeah. Basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking um, of which, the guy who is one of the directors of Blair Witch directed the finale. Yeah, oh, wow. That's, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're getting these like postcards. And this is, what, this is kind of where I was touching on before about the stuff where I'm like, I'm excited, but also a little nervous, but still a little bit I'm excited. so excited. Um, because, yeah, it could veer off in any kind of direction. So I have no idea. Yeah. Currently, like you don't know who the antler queen is. That is the the main person it's that is in charge of this cult. Very strongly hinted, though. It is very strongly hinted, and it, it has to be Lottie, yeah. right? Or at least, I and I think this is probably maybe the case where, like, I mean, they did one of those shots where, you know, there's a mounted animal deer head or something yeah, in, in the, the wall cabin, of this hunting yeah. lodge that they're in, and she stands in front of it, and the antlers are sticking, so she's behind it, and the antlers are sticking out of her head, so it's like yeah. a foreshadowing type shot. Yeah. And, so, yeah. and she's the tallest, and the antler queen is very tall, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. The um, But it could be something that is just like, maybe she is for a while. And then it's not, but I do no. think that it's her. They vote every her three months. Oh Congratulations, God. you're the next antler wow. queen. Yeah, like, no. I really do think it is her in the yeah. future. Yeah. My question is, since we know Misty is a part of it um, mm-hmm. in the past, but mm-hmm. she is aligned with our main four. Seemingly. Seemingly. What, is she just always this kind of person who can just float between things um kind of like me in high school um (laughs) or is she some kind of double agent and for who and why yeah that's a really good question yeah i I thought that was an interesting theory strong hints that she is a double agent i think the very fact that the cult members kidnap natalie at the end of of all people would it be natalie that to (laughs) me who who, um uh misty has been very focused on much to my delight (laughs) um uh that that to me seems like a a clue that misty is working with them right but we'll see Yeah. yeah So did the cult kill Travis? That's the thing. I think we we're, we go through this whole thing where the show, you're like, is this really something bigger or isn't it? And Natalie thinks that Travis was killed by something, something. someone, yeah. um, and found like the, the symbol on the floor mm-hmm. where he presumably hung himself. Um, and by the end has sort of come around to think, to just, the idea that it really was just a suicide and is about to kill herself, um, yeah. kind of because of it and the, the place that she got to from that. Um, 
when they kidnap her instead, fortunately. <laughs> um, yeah, that was Misty saving and, her life. Exactly. And, like, once again, like, when she came and snorted up all the coke. Yeah. Um, oh, my God, that's my favorite moment in the whole show. When Bart. Misty barges in and snorts up all the coke. So good. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think that I believed it when Natalie finally believed it, that it was just a suicide, and I think then her kidnapping, like, kind of swings it around. She has this, like, other friend. That was the kind of stuff that I was so confused about that she would, like, meet up with to help her do Who's a cop shenanigans. Yeah. yeah, procedural cop stuff. Um, and I was like, what's going on here? Um well, it was like her high school boyfriend or like whatever in Friends in high school. Oh, no, I in high school woman that she met at the diner. Wait, what? I don't even remember. And that. she's oh, like the part of the kidnap former sponsor. The yeah. yeah. Oh god. Well, she's it, she's the one who gives them uh you know the intel that the cult is involved in, yeah. mo- in money stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> you know cults are always involved in money well, stuff. Lottie. Yeah. Lottie yeah. is rich. Or Lottie is Lottie rich. Lottie is Antler Queen, yeah. aka a leader of this cult. Right. That's another good, like, she needs to still be in charge of the cult because yeah. the cult has some funding through her. Yeah. Uh, I just cannot wait for this casting. It has to be good. Um, I also am just really curious to see how her folk religion, you know, just so based in that place, you know, how does it transform, transform. when it's moved, I, presumably in part moved to yes. back and to civilization? Have they revisited that area? Do they go there for pilgrimages? If you're like, right that there's something about that particular area that is... Yeah. powerful then mm. clearly she would have to return mm-hmm. and that means we'll get to see the you know Don't the adult stare. characters go to the woods oh yes. shit can't wait I need season, to about that. season three yeah you're right <laughs> yeah. you're right we have to right. go back yeah yes. you gotta do it oh <laughs> yeah. boy but I mean like on the other hand you know all religions are kind of like outside of I don't know like Judaism and Christianity are outside of like Israel, so you, you can have a religion. Exi- outside. Religions in exile is definitely the diaspora yeah. Of, yeah. of the woods. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, one of one character who I think will definitely be part of the cult, who is a little bit of um, a fun addition to season one, is Ali, the teammate who. Uh, was not on yes, the plane. The oh wannabe. my gosh! Yes. Yeah. So she was uh, not. She's a, she was like a freshman on on this team. Thaisa um, is especially displeased with her. Yeah. So they, you know, they're like, she's a weak player. How can we deal with this? And then, oops, Thaisa like slide tackles her in a in a scrimmage, and oh her God. leg <laughs> busts open, and so she Ooh. can't go to the na- nationals. So she's not on the plane, and. In 2021, that that plot line, that character is really fun. She appears in the pilot as like I was almost there, you know, like, and then <laughs> and then in the finale when there's like a reunion, um, she's like the star of that too. But clearly, you know, her life is I was almost there. She's like, make sure you to immediately let everybody see the psychology of yeah. how someone like that would end up in in the tree cult. Exactly, <laughs> her like fucking FOMO for not she being a part, to be of a part of it. She's a hundred percent a part of this. A cult. bit of a misty oh, yeah. situation, you know, want, wanting <laughs> yeah. acceptance at all costs. Oh, yeah. I, I buy that. I'm, yeah. I'm excited for that. <laughs> she's great too. The actress. yeah, yeah. she's really fun. Mm-hmm. So there's so many things in this show that have yet to be explained. I feel like we could just go on and on about the baby, all this stuff. Like, will what the baby be eaten? Baby, like so many things. Who is the Man no, with eyes? no eyes? Yeah, and the haunting tie. Um, you know, who's the like the hunter fandom? I think calls him the hunter who like yeah. owns. Who owns the, yeah, that the guy. Cabin. I'm very curious Jackie about that guy. Right, he's there in the spooky dream that seems to be no. a shared oh, I have a dream. Question. Yes, yeah. I saw that. Too. I didn't even think about it because I know that Shauna wakes up with like a kind of startled um, in the morning after we see Jackie um, having this, you know, very intense like death dream, hypothermia, nice dream time. Yeah. <laughs> um, and except for that, when a weird spooky ghost man sort of appears in it um at the end of the dream you see shauna wake up instead um and i guess it's implied that they they kind of shared this yeah. um, again that area, i don't know it's place. like did she just wake up because it was really cold and it didn't snow and it was like, oh um you know yeah i like to think that they shared it that it was like a last moment that 
Jackie and Shauna got to have together. Yeah, when it kind of well, then she would have to then, believe. Shauna would have to become a believer in the weird stuff. I think on. Shauna definitely was at some point a believer in the weird stuff. I don't think well, she was you like. Think so? you're, you think she's like fully like in the religion? I think she's there for like the survival. Aspect. I suspect that there are a few characters maybe participating in the cult who don't, either like, believe don't exactly believe it or or get alienated over the course of. I that's, don't. That's I don't my remember feeling about what we're gonna be watching. I I don't remember Shauna's reaction when uh, they did the prayer. I mean, everybody but Jackie did the the prayer right. led by Lottie, um, which is our first sort of like real big together moment Organized of this new religion. Religion, um, yeah. Jack is the only one who like fully pieced out right. on that. Everybody else was willing to along with it because it's sort of like, okay, the group is doing this. This is what we have to do before yeah. we eat. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Teenage so. girls love to fit in. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Hopefully. I, I do think that uh, if we are, I don't really know what's going to happen with her baby, but if it survives birth um, mm-hmm. and like she yeah, needs to feed know. it, I I, th- I think that Shauna would become a cannibal because she needs to eat to produce like milk for this baby. So she would do like, she would so eat it's anything. A, it's really. a choice. Yeah. I think it's like, if it was like, who's going to be the first to eat with who she is as a person, that you she's know, willing to make that sacrifice. Yeah, maybe. Or like, yeah. or, or they'll just easily deal with the baby where it's like, you know, stillborn or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. I got like one more question because then I feel like we could just go on on forever. Like in this moment, I want to do like an in the weeds episode for like every <laughs> single episodes one through 10. Like, I want to do an In the Weeds episode for every single character individually. Yeah. <laughs> like, I would just, yeah. I could just, uh, it's hard to talk about broadly, I feel like. It's very so, hard. It's so intricate. I feel like we um, left out everything. I know. But no, we said, I think we've said a lot and at least been very enticing about people watching the show, I hope. Um, my, my just final question is, did they eat Jackie? Are they going to eat Jackie? Oof. Or are they not going to eat Jackie? Is that the, is this the start? Is Maybe. this the start? Ooh. Um because they yeah. do have the big giant bear, but like Jackie is now the like the really like the first one to die sort of in the situation where it's getting more desperate. It's now it's winter. Um yeah. she's frozen. She's frozen so she can keep. <laughs> <laughs> um and this might be like I don't know. Start. If I know it's really dark, but the show is really dark, and they're going to start eating there each other for sure. There has to be okay. So. The only reason, okay, so <laughs> if the bear, if there's if there's something wrong with the bear, right? So that's right. the theory. Jackie yeah, did say there, it was yeah. weird. It yeah. Was being so weird. The, the the bear was being weird, and like Lottie like tamed it to and then it died. Or did Lottie just tame it? I don't know, but like magic. If it is weird and like the people who ate it, you know, got sick, like there was a, that in the wilds that happened. Like they found some right. um, shellfish, shellfish, right. and then everybody they ate puked. it, and then everybody got sick. So like <laughs> that could easily happen, right? So like whoever ate it, like if they got sick, they're like we can't. Like this whole giant bear that they have, they can't eat it. So Ooh, that means then they're forced. They're forced to get new food. But Jackie will still maybe keep in this cold weather. Yeah, like so it would have to be. It would have to be Oof. like the dead of winter. Oof, you guys are hurting me. This it's is just rough. the beginning of winter yeah. now. So and obviously it wouldn't be everybody. It would be. It would be know, some people. Some people right. would some have people to would be refuse. willing to do it. Yeah. yeah, and some people clearly will not. Be and willing. then <laughs> those people would become food. <laughs> would they have known about that movie at the time, the soccer team movie? Alive? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I saw it's it in the nineties. Right? Yeah, yeah. The, the movie's from the eighties. No, the movie's from the nineties. I thought it was from the eighties. I don't know. I haven't seen it. I saw it in the nineties. I just don't know if that was something they would be aware. Of like, remember that soccer team movie, The Crash, and then they <laughs> with the kill. I hope they um, mention it. Yeah. So I, do. I just don't remember um, what year. Um, but anyway, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I I can't decide. But it just does. It feels like that's where we le- have left them yeah. in the past. Yeah. So we don't know. And of course, you know Lottie's last line in French about time to spill some blood, ladies. Oh, so <laughs> yeah. good, man. So she seems to be. Voting for Jackie eating. Uh, yeah. So good. Um, I, I would not. Lottie. I would not uh, be good in this scenario. Oh, I don't. I don't think any of us would be so good. <laughs> oh, uh, but I wouldn't have been on the plane anyway because I don't. I'm not good at sports. I think um, the JV team will be first to be eaten. Oh, I'm excited. 
excited you don't for think more it's with the JV team. Aquila, have to yeah. Because I feel like you still did have that sense of hierarchy even in yeah. the woods. You know, JV was beneath <laughs> I know, our I know. city. So I would love to kind of do the, you know, episode from JV's perspective, what <laughs> everything's been like. Yeah. Real quick. What do you guys think the the key art will be for season two? Because the oh, season one key art, yeah, when you like, first you don't know, right? So it's like a face with a little B on it and like a bloody nose. And then you're like, oh, that's Jackie's face yeah. once you figure it out. Who is in many ways a, the central figure of yeah. season one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like in her eye is the antler queen. Mm. Um do you think it'll be some antlers? I think there'll be some antlers. Well, I think it would be like the antler queen. Antler queen. Like with full like blonde. <laughs> I, I, think I think so too. Like the full on. Because as you're like at this point, like we're all worshiping the antler yeah, queen. Yeah, I think we're all there. <laughs> <laughs> but I actually thought it was really funny that this this kind of reminds the Yellow Jacket season one one with like the big B on her face. Um, reminds me of the Silence of the Lambs Ooh, um, yes. poster. Cause it does. It's like with a the moth. Half face. And it's like, yeah. you know, the the only other famous cannibals oh. out there is Hannibal Lecter. All right, good, <laughs> yeah, good. Nice. 90s and all that stuff. Yeah, so. it's nice. Okay, well, have, okay, have we done it? I mean, as as much as we've as much as talked we a lot, I, I just, I might have to just, I don't know, start <laughs> writing essays or something. I don't know. Yeah. I got There's just, so much. So much It's insane, it's yeah. It's so, it's so well done. It really is a kind of tour de force in acting Mm -hmm. um, and in, like, really getting these themes across of, like, all these girls and their trauma and how it kind of stalks them around. Um, So, yeah, I love it. I love it. It's so good. Yeah, you guys, if you haven't seen it, you really, really should. I mean, if you're still (laughs) listening listening at the end here. (laughs) Good job. Thanks. Okay. (laughs) Anyway, we've done Yellow Jackets. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Yes. Yeah. All right. Follow us on all the stuff and things. Yep. Um, we're on, um, what's it? Apple Podcasts. You can uh, listen and leave reviews, etc. You can listen to us basically anywhere that you can listen to podcasts. We're on Twitter at Xena Warrior Pod. We are on Facebook, Xena Warrior Podcast. And also Patreons, patreon.com slash Xena Warrior Podcast, where we have just recently dropped the latest episode in the Lucy Lost IMDb experience, where we have gone more broadly, but also more in depth about um, my life is murder. I know we talked about um, the episode with Renee, but this is a um, episode about the whole show itself, season one and season two. Um, so you can find that over on Patreon. The power, the passion, the, the podcast. podcast.